Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers and today's video is about fat. Now, there's so many different con contexts about fat, but um, I've been influenced by a number of different interactions that I've had in the last little while because from about 2010, 2012, certainly in my group on the ketogenic side, we really heavily went always low carb, but we really went very heavily into adding fat, adding fat, eat as much fat as you can. And, and clearly a huge amount of fat in your diet, a high fat diet, by the way, is anything about 35% of your calories is fat, but we're talking about the 60, 70, 80% calories is fat. And when you cut out the carbohydrates, your protein stays pretty, uh, pretty consistent around 30% of your calories, but your fat consumption goes up tremendously. Um, and that 30% comes from Zoe Harkham, who's got a great Monday letter that I would suggest you subscribe to online. Having said which, um, let's talk about that fat component because I've been influenced by a number of people. The first thing I'll tell you is this, that the exclusive purpose, the exclusive purpose of a low carbohydrate, high fat, ketogenic diet is to treat insulin resistance that everybody on the standard American diet has. There's a paper that recently came out that said that 61% of five-year-old children in America have evidence of insulin resistance. That's astronomical. So if you change that around, the quickest, most effective way to treat your obesity, treat your diabetes, is to go on an ultra-low carbohydrate, high-fat diet with protein coming along for the ride. Once you're there and you're going to eat for the rest of your life, what should that food look like? And there are a couple of influences that I've had. The first thing is this. I'm obviously not from America. My accent is from Africa. I've been here a very long time. But America is unique, although other countries are adopting this as well. America is unique in that our commercially produced food has specifically and intentionally been made devoid of fat. Because about 50, 60 years ago, we became very fat averse. We became fat phobic and carbohydrate centric. So what we do is when we manufacture food, animal products, we take all the fat away. We take the skin off the chicken and we eat the white meat of the chicken. We trim away the fat off the steak. If you're eating a lamb chop, a lamb chop from Australia and New Zealand, when it comes to this country, that beautiful rim of fat that sits on the outside has been taken away. You ask any butcher, you ask any commercial food prep person, they slice away the fat, they take all the fat away. And on the, on the leftover block, the stuff that goes in the garbage is these tons of fat. Yes, you can still get fat in bacon, you can still get fat in other places, but for the majority, the food that we buy in the stores, the food we get in our restaurants, has the fat that naturally comes with that animal has been eliminated because of our intellectual aversity to fat. And... I think based on that, when people developed a ketogenic diet in the United States of America, they looked at that food and said, where's all the fat? So now we've created all these phenomenal ways of adding fat back. So we're eating the ribeye steak, we're buying it naturally, but we're also adding butter and ghee and olive oil, and we're adding a ton of fat back into our food. We're wrapping a filet steak in bacon, we're adding cheese, we're adding dairy, we're using fat as a condiment, and I support that early on in a ketogenic diet, but we're adding massive amounts of fat. When the average patient of mine who is becoming a keto veteran is somewhere in the 65 to 85% of calories as fat. And folks, for the most part, day in and day out, that is not natural. That's not what we get in nature. So there are two big things to look at from an influential perspective. The first thing is this that when you go overseas and you eat food, especially animal products, where the animal was killed, skinned, chopped up, and put on your plate. No processing, no removal of anything. We're eating the skin of the chicken. We're eating the dark meat. We're eating the fat that is marbled within the meat or the fat that is on the outside of the meat. The fat is an inherent part of meat, of animal products overseas. Even when, when I go overseas, we get full cream milk, which is milk that has been pasteurized but not skimmed. In this country, even whole, uh, even, even, uh, whole milk has been skimmed. They've taken the fat off. So we have to sit with whole milk and add heavy whipping cream to, add the, to reconstitute it. That's craziness. So we have reduced our fat in this country, and therefore you have to add it. Well, maybe not. But if you go overseas, you can still get 
the fat that comes naturally with the product. And then you don't have to fatten it up. You can throw some salt on, maybe throw some pepper on, some spices on, and eat the food as it comes. So one influence I have in speaking to people overseas, eat the food as nature provided it. Eat food as nature provided it. And that's the best food we can eat. And, and the value of grass-fed animals, not that the expense is necessarily worth it, but if you can, it's great, is that it hasn't been put in a feedlot and fed a whole bunch of carbohydrates. No mammal can tolerate carbohydrates. But we force-feed our cows grain, make them into fat diabetic animals to slaughter them. No, eat like sheep, for example, mostly come from the field, get slaughtered, and become our food. So, if you can eat the meat that is as nature made it and have some lean cuts and some fattier cuts, that's the ideal spectrum. The other person that has had a profound influence on in my life, um, both in terms of my capacity to understand what they're doing as well as longevity, and if you've got diabetes, especially type 1 diabetes, you should know this person. It's Richard Bernstein. Dr. Bernstein has a very simplistic way of eating. He says, eat the fat that comes with the food. Eat the fat that comes with the food. Even in America, is there a higher percentage of protein relative to fat with the food that comes with the meat? Yes, absolutely. But except for the first three to six months where you're trying to become insulin sensitive, just eat the food as it comes. You don't have to load it up with tons of fat. And I have my lean days, I have my higher fat days. I have my ribeye days, I have my fillet days. I've changed that in terms of how I eat. I used to be uh, um, high protein. Then 2012, switched over to being high fat. And now I've gone back to a fluctuating diet where I eat some food that is higher fat and some food that is very lean. <coughs> I love my deer meat, I love my bison, but I love my ribeyes too. And there's no harm to that. So I think this obsession with eating fat needs to be let go of, except for the rookies in the first few months of correcting insulin sensitivity. If you're obese, you're trying to lose weight. If you're trying to block appetite, sure, use the fat. But too much fat is not a good thing. Too much fat is not a good thing in the diet. No carbohydrates is always a good thing, in my opinion, at least if you've suffered from diseases. But eat the fat that comes with your food. And it's going to be far healthier than loading up and loading up and drinking, buttering your coffee and all that kind of horse shit. Come on, man. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. People sell that to you. You don't need to do that. You're getting enough. I hope this has made you think. I hope it has gotten in your head a little bit. But looking at fat within limits is such an important conversion or transformation of our way of thinking. And when is excess fat appropriate? When is less appropriate? That is very important. We can help you with that. If you're interested in a consult, if you want to know, even if you're a carnivore veteran, if you're a rookie starting out, if you're mostly vegetarian, you want to know how to get sources of fat in your diet, how to get sources of protein in, we'll cover that spectrum because we're about nutritional health and reduction of harm and metabolic syndrome. Not about carnivore, not about pure keto. There are variances depending on who you are. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. Give us a text. Send us a WhatsApp. Leave a message, 561-517-0642, if you desire a consult. We're on YouTube, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and I believe we're on TikTok. Old guys like me, not allowed on TikTok. <laughs> but my presence is there. Take care. Talk to you next time. Leave a comment down below.